Evolution, coming from the Latin word evolutio, meaning unrolling of a book. How appropriate that this biological process was named such. However, Charles Darwin preferred descent with modification, which is basically what natural selection is, because the term evolution was formerly used to describe the progression of embryological development. An evolution of a species does not strive for progress or increase in complexity. It is believed that all life on Earth derived from the same unicellular organism in the origin of life, called the last universal common ancestor. Evolution is a multidisciplinary study that draws evidence from several branches of science to understand changes in the diversity of life from the LUCA, including genetics, ecology, systematics, paleontology, embryology, biogeography, molecular biology, and anthropology. This evidence helps to establish patterns and trends and discrepancies to gain a better understanding of how changes in species occurred and unrolled the Book of Life. Patterns play a significant role in analyzing the evidence collected to support evolution. The changes that occurred happened in the past, at timescales usually too slow to observe changes, and well before recorded history. And while our ancestors may have asked why there are diverse life forms, our ancestors did not use a systematic method for collecting data regarding these changes. One compelling pattern in evolution comes from biogeography, the study of the distribution of living things and how they are affected by abiotic factors. Within this branch of science is paleobiogeography, which uses the fossil record over billions of years to produce its geographical evidence. This became possible when, in 1912, Alfred Wagner proposed the continental drift theory. Between 335 and 175 million years ago, the continental plates were united in the last known supercontinent named Pangaea. How was this known? Scientists uncovered several fossils of extinct species, Cynonathus, Mesosaurus, Lystrosaurus, and Glossopterus, that were distributed across present-day South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and the Indian subcontinent. When I say distributed across, I mean that fossils of each of these species were found on these now geographically separated land masses and over a large enough area that these fossils could not possibly have been transported and left there for scientists to find. By working backwards and joining continental boundaries, it was found that these continents were once joined but have since drifted apart due to tectonic activity and ocean spreading. Another compelling source of evidence comes from the succession of fossils in the fossil record itself. In undisturbed layers of rock, the layers near the surface are younger than deeper layers. Dating techniques, both relative and absolute, can be used to determine the age of these rock layers. Relative dating relies on index fossils, those species which have a brief but known time of existence, to estimate the age of the rocks. Absolute dating determines the age of rocks through the radioactive decay of isotopes, called radiometric dating, by using the known half-lives of these isotopes, such as uranium lead, potassium argon, rubidium strontium, and carbon-14 dating. If a fossil is found in a layer of rock, the fossil must be as old as the rock itself. As fossils become found in different layers, they create visual evidence that shows the gradual changes over time, where there are changes over time with the species, but still retaining former characters. The fossil record remains incomplete, but the similarities and differences can still be observed and measured. Based on fossil evidence, two patterns in the pace of evolution have been identified. On one side is gradualism. In this rate, a species slowly accumulates mutations. Intermediate species are very similar to their former and successive species. In gradualism, change is slow, constant, and consistent. On the other side is punctuated equilibrium. This rate is more commonly accepted with the evolution of clades. Changes happen over rapid, intermittent periods of time. In between these periods of change are periods of stability. When there are rapid environmental changes or catastrophic events, the reproducing population is reproduced due to beneficial adaptations that were already present in the population. 
Regardless whether the pace occurs gradually or quickly, either leads to speciation and could involve convergent evolution or adaptive radiation. Speciation is a lineage-splitting event that produces two or more separate species. When two distinct lineages evolve a similar characteristic independently of one another, it is referred to as convergent evolution. This often occurs because both lineages face similar environmental challenges and selective pressures. This produces analogous structures. Analogous structures are dissimilar in anatomy, but the structures do similar functions because they have both experienced natural selection that shaped them to play a key role in flight. While birds and bats are both chordates, they are still quite unrelated, one being a bird and the other a mammal. The wings themselves were developed from dissimilar origins, meaning that wings in each were not inherited from a common ancestor. Analogies are the result of convergent evolution. On the other hand, when a lineage produces diversification through ecological specialization, resulting in the differentiation of common structures, it is the product of adaptive radiation. The structures are similar in anatomy, but perform dissimilar functions. This suggests these structures were inherited from a common ancestor and have a common similar development pattern and origin. These structures are thus called homologous. A classic example of homologous structures are the pentadactyl limbs and tetrapods. Tetrapods are those which have four limbs. Birds, bats, mice, and crocodiles all have four limbs. Sharks and bony fish do not. The ancestor of tetrapods evolved four limbs and its descendants have inherited that feature. So the presence of four limbs is a homology. The pentadactyl limb is a hand or foot that has five digits. Interestingly, Though bird and bat wings are analogous as wings, as forelimbs, they are homologous. Bird and bats did not inherit wings from a common ancestor, but they did inherit forelimbs from a common ancestor with forelimbs. The human pentadactyl limb, or arm, is composed of 30 bones. Our limb is specialized to reach and grab. You are going to draw conclusions from evidence about the pentadactyl limbs and tetrapods to support the theory of evolution. Evolutionary history is an especially challenging area of science because experiments cannot be performed to establish past events or their causes. There are nonetheless scientific methods of establishing beyond reasonable doubt what happened in some cases. How do these methods compare to those used by historians to reconstruct the past? <laughs>